good Sunday, everyone. Our weather map today prominently shows a big cold front coming across the country, stretching from say, near Chicago, Illinois, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Along of and ahead of that front, some showers, maybe some thunderstorms. But look up there behind the front. Wisconsin, Minnesota, parts of Michigan, very heavy snow today. They can see some significant accumulations. And uh, they've had a lot of snow this winter. I think they're about sick of it. But, you know, I wish they could just could have sent just a little bit of it down here, right? <laughs> and then some more snow showers for the mountains in the Pacific Northwest. Look at our five-day forecast. Got 90% chance of showers today as that front comes through. They're not going to amount to much. It looks like we might get up to a quarter of an inch of rain out of these showers. Most of us are not going to get anywhere near that, I don't think. Tonight, some part of cloudy skies, lows around 40, and then tomorrow, highs around 60. And yes, the sun comes out tomorrow. We may even see some peaks of sun this afternoon, but the winds start picking up. 25 mile per hour gust today, 35 mile per hour gust on Monday. Don't plan on burning anything outside on Monday. Low humidity. Strong northerly winds, highs around 60, so it's going to be pretty warm in the afternoon. That's going to set the stage for some wildfire dangers. Don't, don't mess around with that. Winds stay up through the week, but not nearly as bad as on Monday until we get to about Thursday, and we might start seeing uh, peak wind gusts of around 30 miles per hour. Um, during the afternoon on Thursday, but look at that high on Thursday, 80 degrees. So Thursday night, we might start introducing a chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. I'll keep an eye on that. That's a little far out to really get specific with, but for the most part, looking really good this week. It was not looking good on this day in 1921. An early morning severe weather outbreak produced five tornadoes across Middle Tennessee, primarily from Giles to Can Cannon County. That's across Southern Middle Tennessee. All are classified as F2, though there were four fatalities. In 1998, this is the big one, 13 tornadoes across Middle Tennessee, a massive one mile wide F4 tornado killed three people in Wayne County. Again, that's down in southern Middle Tennessee and Tennessee's one and only F5 heavily damaged the Deerfield area of Lawrence County. And then an F3 tornado moved through downtown Nashville. The first tornado hit the downtown area in more than 65 years. Other areas around Middle Tennessee had baseball-sized hail. I know they had a terrible hail storm up in Bowling Green, Kentucky at the same, on this same day. So numerous supercells across Middle Tennessee is the ninth largest tornado outbreak in our history. But the F5 that occurred down in southern Middle Tennessee, that's the one and only we've ever recorded in all of Tennessee. And it was a doozy. It removed up to about a foot of topsoil, and a pickup truck left out in the field has never been found. So there's some incredible damage, but thank goodness that F5 was down over rural areas of southern middle Tennessee and not farther north into the Nashville area. That would have been unbelievable. It was bad enough that we had the F3 go through downtown Nashville, but oh my goodness, I can't imagine an F5. Um, that storm that went through Nashville did eventually spawn another tornado on the um, northern end of the plateau up around Birdstown. It too was an F3, so that supercell was meaning some business as it traveled along. But very active day, very historic day, and we can be very thankful that we're not dealing with anything like that today. You folks have a wonderful Sunday and keep looking up. And for more weather, just keep going along. Meteorologistmark.com.